Hello, my name is Israel Oman, and you're watching Tape with Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I want to watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're going to watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. Glad you could be with us today. My guest today is Dr. Robert Yisrael Oman from Jerusalem. Um, he was born in Frankfurt and uh, comes from an Orthodox Jewish family, fled the Nazis and came to the United States in 1938, lived in New York. Uh, there he uh, received his uh, city college a bachelor's degree in New York in 1950 and his PhD in mathematics from MIT in 1955. He went on Aliyah, moved to Israel in 1956. He joined the mathematics department at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And uh, in 1990, he was among the founders of the Center for Rationality at Hebrew University. He is uh, an expert on game theory, and that's his expertise. And uh, he's been a member of over a dozen different departments. Um, he's the author of over 80 research papers and six books. And he's had visiting positions at Princeton, Yale, Berkeley, at Stanford, and so many other schools. Uh, he's a member of the Academy of Arts and Sciences. And uh, he holds an honorary doctorate from the University of Chicago, Bonn, uh, Louvain, City College, and bar -Lan University. And he is the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences recipient for 2005. Dr. Oman, welcome to the show and welcome to Chicago. Um, tell me, you tonight are giving a Devar Torah to the people at Ari Crown Hebrew Day School in Skokie, Illinois, as part of your visit here at Ari Crown. And I know you visited with the students and uh, visited with uh, some uh, uh, parents today at a reception. Uh, how is it that someone who is uh, in the sciences, an expert in game theory, which I certainly don't understand, is, uh, is giving a Devar Torah as his speech? And do you do this often when you speak around to Jewish groups? Yeah, well, first of all, I'd, I'd like to just make a small correction. I'm not a member of a dozen different departments. There are a dozen different departments that are associated with the Center for Rationality, uh -huh. which I helped to found. That's just a small correction. As far as your question is concerned, do I uh, give a Dvar Torah when I uh, am speaking with Jewish groups? Well, yeah, I do uh, quite frequently, yes. Uh, uh, I find that uh, an interesting and appropriate thing to do. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's wonderful. Um, was your growing up in, in yeshiva and studying, were you, were you centered on sciences as a young boy also, or did that come later in life as, as Talmud study and Torah study was obviously uh, along with your secular studies as a, a young boy? Well, I became as interested in mathematics in high school. We had a wonderful teacher. His name was Abraham Gansler. For some reason, we called him Joey. <laughs> but his name was Abraham, uh, and uh, he really turned me on to mathematics, especially uh, the uh, geometry of Euclid, the triangles, circles, theorems, proofs. This turned me on, and that is really the most important part of high school mathematics. And it's not the cookbook stuff, uh, uh, quadratic equations and so on. It's less important, uh, because uh, geometry is a real mathematics, and that, that's what turned me on. Very nice. Uh, I understand you know my very dear friend, uh, Hillel Furstenberg, who's also in the mathematics department at Hebrew University and travels as a, as a guest at other universities. Are there other famous mathematicians that you have uh, worked with that viewers who are in the field of math and science would, would be familiar with? Who viewers, viewers would, would be familiar with, yeah. Well, um, with Shlomo Sternberg, mm -hmm. who uh, I haven't worked with him, but he's uh, 
is a prominent uh, film mathematician. There is uh, uh, Leon Aaron Price, who is also a prominent film mathematician. There's Leo Flato, who is a prominent film mathematician. Uh, there must be a lot of others. Uh, it's it's wonderful that you could come up with some names. It's, a, it's much appreciated. Uh, there's Benjamin Weiss. Uh, who's a prominent film mathematician. Um, we have quite a few at the, in the mathematics department at the university, uh, but I also mentioned some Americans. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, there might, be, uh, there might be uh, quite a few, and I imagine there are also physicists and, and uh, uh, yeah, and quite a few. You know, there's something called the Association of Orthodox Jewish uh, Scientists uh, in the United States, uh, which is, um, it's, it's, so there must be a lot of people out there. Uh, well, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's uh, Bob Gordon, who's a prominent uh, from uh, chemist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yeah, a lot of people out there. Very nice, very nice. My, my, my dear friend and my Rav growing up, Rabbi Jay Karzen, told me he davens with you and, and uh, introduced me to you when he was a guest on my show. Right after you won the Nobel Prize, he had brought, uh, he was in town and taping a show with me, and he said, prominent news in the Jewish world, and there was Dr. Robert Ullman, the winner of the Nobel Prize. Israel Ullman. He won the Nobel Prize for his economic. You have a picture of him here. a picture too, yes. Did you know that you were up for a Nobel Prize? Did you know they were considering you? I know our viewers, uh, meeting someone on TV who's with me, who they do know, uh, who, who has received the Nobel Prize, must wonder, how does it come about that you get found and, 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 and receive the prize? Is it something that someone elects you for, or are they are looking for people in your field and they, they, they kind of look into you yourself? How does it come about? I really don't know. It's, a, it's quite a secretive procedure. And, uh what, what do I care? Well, you know how they do it. Yes, they do it. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm the kind of person. If it's something which is not a direct concern to me, uh, I don't worry about it. Yes. So whatever they do, they do. Uh, I think there's a process of nomination or something like that. But it's very secretive. They uh -huh. keep their work very secretive. You ask whether I knew that I was being considered. No, I didn't know. I think uh, about uh, in '94 there was a prize given on game theory, and at that time there were rumors that I was being considered. But it's all very secretive. I didn't know. So in '94 I didn't get it. But now, so at that time I thought maybe. I don't know. But uh, but now in '05 uh, it came like a lightning from the blue sky. I didn't know. We're going to take you to uh, Dr. Oman's uh, presentation at Ari Crown Hebrew Day School in Skokie, Illinois, and we'll be right back here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. I'm Rabbi Jay Carson from Jerusalem. And I'm Rabbi Ruby Ray Carson from Jerusalem. And you're, you're watching, watching Taped with, with Rabbi, Rabbi Doug. Doug. Professor Robert Israel Oman is the 2005 recipient of the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. Born in Frankfurt, he and his family ultimately fled Nazi Germany two weeks before Kristallnacht and settled in New York City, where he attended the Rabbi Jacob Joseph Yeshiva in the City College of New York. He made Aliyah to Israel in 1956 and has been a faculty member of the Mathematics Department at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem ever since. Professor Alman's research is focused on an area of mathematics known as game theory, and he has also written and lectured on a number of Talmudic topics to which he has brought his expertise to bear. Uh, at this point, I would like to call on our principal, Rabbi Samer, to give us a brief uh, introduction of the part of the We want to welcome everybody to Eric Crown for a night that in many ways represents a lot of what Eric Crown is all about. That wonderful combination of striving for greatness in both the Judaic studies in the Kodesh and in the general studies in the Mudithol. 
And what a, a, a great way to present that with this evening. And I'm the honor of having Professor Almond here to speak with us tonight. We are in the midst of learning the parsha, of reading the parshios of Sefer Bracious. Sefer Bracious has a number of names. One of the names for Sefer Bracious is called Sefer Hayashar. Book of the of the straight, the straight path. Yashar, that straightness, was part of the quality that was bequeathed to us by our Avos and the Imos, the patriarchs and matriarchs, into the what would be the spiritual DNA of the Jewish people. As is evident in the name, B'nai Yisrael, Yashar Kel. There is a straight, a straightness that is found in the quality of the Jewish people. Now, math is, while well, I'd like to think I'm okay, but certainly in the presence of a professor who received the Nobel Prize in that area, I will humbly say, not very good. But one thing I know about, one rule of math, that is a straight line goes on to eternity. Does not have an end to it. Yashar, that straightness which is in the B'nai Yisrael, which is in our spiritual DNA, allows for the potential of greatness. That with the effort that is put in, the opportunity to grow to, et to eternity is there for each and every one of us. So to have the opportunity to hear from somebody who has applied himself in both areas of his life and has achieved greatness, and God willing will continue to grow and continue to achieve even greater heights, it is truly an honor for us to hear Professor Alman tonight. To, to the first item, on the, uh, the four items on one of the second part of the paper. I'd like to start with the first item. I'm going to read it and then I'll translate it. So, this is a quotation from Hashat uh, Ruma. Um, Vasita Kapore Zahav Tahor. ונתת את הכפורת על הארון מלמעלה, ואל הארון תיתן את העדות אשר תיתן את העדות. So the reference over here is to the holy arm, the Ten Commandments, which you see on the other side of this page. Mm -hmm. And this was placed in the ark, in the holy ark. This was a covering for the holy ark. It was made out of pure gold, a covering, a couple of And two and a half uh, uh, L's long and an L and a half wide. And you should make two cherubs. In fact, the King James translation calls it the cherubim, the cherubims. And it's a little strange because they use a plural 
Moore's book and added on to the Hebrew book. Two books. Okay. Uh, make, uh, nowadays we would say two cherubs. Uh, and these were images, sculptures of little children with wings. Okay? were facing each other. They um, uh, sort of cover, the, with their wings, they cover this cover of the arm. And they face each other. They are looking at each other. And then you should put the, this cover with the cherubs on the ark, on top of the ark. Put the cover on the ark. With the cherubs. And into the ark, you put the testimony that I will give you. And this testimony is the Zu'i kol atorah kula. 
ایدخ پروشه زیگم Another story is about a guy who came to Shammai and said, convert me to Judaism on condition that you will teach me the whole Torah while I'm standing on one leg. Somebody asked me, uh, there was a little reception uh, uh, before I came here, somebody asked me, teach me all of game theory while I'm standing on I took an amata binyan and I chased him away. <laughs> uh, but Hillel answered him, yes, but if not Hillel, you can't take it. Give it. He converted it on the spot. He converted it. Now he has to fulfill the condition. The condition is that he teaches him the whole Torah while he's standing on one leg. And he said to him, but he said, what's the whole Torah? What is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow man. This is the entire Torah. And the rest of it is an explanation, a commentary. Go and study. Go and study the commentary. But I just told you the entire <coughs> well, It's a famous Gemara, yes. We all know this Gemara. But when we think about it a little bit, it's a little more, this Gemara. Okay? It's wonderful to have Ben Adam La Chavero which is so important, so much uh, uh, weight, so much emphasis put on the relation between man and his fellow man, to have honorable, decent relationships, to have uh, ethical, moral relationships. Uh, that's wonderful. It's very important. But it's not the whole Torah, right? He said, yeah. children, listen, it says that Zu i kol a Torah kula. This is the whole Torah. So what is he saying? He's saying there is no Benadam Lamakom. It's only Benadam Lachaberon. Benadam Lamakom exists only as a part of the perush, a part of the explanation of Ben Adam Lechavero, of the, the, the rules that govern uh, relationships between man and fellow. The relation between man and God, kashos, shabbos, studying Torah, Ta'as uh, HaMishpah, uh, the whole bit, yeah. You know, <laughs> animals are really crazy. They're crazy, you know. You don't realize how crazy they are until you go to, uh, to let's say, to the Far East, okay? And you try to explain to the people, you go to a hotel, you try to explain to them what you want from them on Shabbos, yes? And you realize yourself how crazy it is. <laughs> This story. I was in Auckland, New Zealand. Yeah. So, in, in one of these hotels, it's almost impossible now to turn on these electronic keys, right? What do you do with an electronic key on shelves? So, I, I asked beforehand, and they said, <coughs> you have to go to the reception for shelves and tell them to. to uh, so, uh, uh, that uh, as long as I be my son, and you're going to need somebody to go up with you to your room to open the key, and then it's okay. The only thing is, there's one thing you have to be careful about, and that is, and that is that the person you tell it to shouldn't be the person who does it. You know? The person you tell it to should tell it to somebody else. 
Ve Rastlar o kadar sağlam bir zarar verdi. Ama hep tanıtıldı işler için. So while the girls at the reception they were looking at the fields for a moment, said I want to talk to the manager. The manager is here, okay, the assistant manager. So she calls out the assistant manager. And I tell her the story. He says, fine, okay. And you go downstairs, leave the key at the desk, and, and, uh, and, uh, and we'll take care of it. He says, I've heard a lot of stories, but this was a damn But okay, fine. That's how I do the customers are here, so I catch it. Okay, we go down, we go to shul, we leave the key at the desk. Anyway, there's no hail of an organ. So uh, uh, we leave the key at the desk, we come back, and we say, uh, uh, we say to the girl there, uh, okay, we want to go to our room. So she said, all right, go to your room. <laughs> Uh, she says, go to you. I say, well, didn't Mr. Morland tell you this and that? I say, she says, Mr. Morland, uh, uh, she didn't say anything, but I'll call her. So Mr. Morland comes out, he's talking the same way, and, and uh, he says, oh yeah, Mr. Norman, okay, I'll open the door for you. <laughs> ah! <laughs> What do you do now? Okay. So I'm my day. <laughs> this is one of the, uh, I, I didn't say anything. Up we went. Mr. Morland opened the door. I'm going to burn in hell because of this. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's totally crazy, these things. They're totally crazy. But that's when I'm down on my home. And you're telling me that this is part of the explanation of the Allah snake? Yeah, what is hateful to you don't do to your fellow man. Then Mr. Morland comes out the door and key and this How is one to understand that, sir? How is one to understand that? This is Naftali Hershtik and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Dak. Welcome back. Uh, your words, you, I love how you intertwine humor and stories with what you have to say. Your, your speeches are just uh, so entertaining and at the same time informative and uh, enthralling. And I think everyone here at Ari Crown uh, just enjoyed your visit so much. And we appreciate that you, you came back since you weren't able to make your first visit, which was planned, to do this. And uh, I want to thank you so much. Uh, my guest today, uh, Professor Robert Allman, uh, Yisrael Allman uh, from Jerusalem, and uh, I presume that uh, you travel a lot. I would not say no, Rabbi. Yeah, I travel too much. Probably. Too much. Too much. But you do return to Jerusalem home eventually. I hope so. I hope so. All right. Once again, thank you so much for being on the show. Remember, check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, and you will find the link to Dr. Allman's website there. And uh, remember, you can drop us an email, info at tvrabbi.com, and we'll give you more information. Once again, I want to thank my guest, Professor Robert Ullman. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Hope to see you next time right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Shalom. <laughs>